Here are some of the best whiskey finishes that I have in my collection right now. What's up everybody, it's Ty the Bourbon Guy and welcome back to my channel. Appreciate you being here, thanks for all the support. We're gonna get right into it. Finishing whiskey. It's something that's kind of controversial. I feel like to some people, some people don't feel like you should still be able to call something bourbon. I feel like explaining that bourbon or rye or any other type of whiskey has been finished in something is good enough, in my opinion. When you put bourbon finished in French oak casks or whatever the case is, right? <laughs> like as long as that's listed on the label, to me, that's good enough. I think that there's a lot of people that are purists and just want purely straight whiskey. I argue that case because finishing whiskey opens the door for so many other people, in my opinion. If there's some people that enjoy wine and now you have a bourbon finished in a wine barrel, that just opens the door or the possibility of somebody kind of getting into bourbon because they, they appreciate or like the wine flavors that it brings. So when you now finish it in a wine barrel, <laughs> there's a chance that that may be a bourbon that they enjoy. And maybe that kind of leads to other things. Doesn't take away from the products on the shelf that are straight bourbon. So if you do enjoy straight bourbon, then I say go for it. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't hinder that because we're also finishing things. I will also say that with finishing whiskey, I think it can be done well and not so well. So the, the people that do it well take very good whiskey and use a finish to complement it. It's, it's something that's, it's almost like cooking to me. Like something has different flavors already naturally. And then when you use different seasonings, you're using that to enhance the experience. But then also there's a certain profile maybe that you're trying to go after rather than just salt the thing or season the thing until you can no longer taste whatever it is that you're trying to get rid of. And I feel like that can also be done in the whiskey world too. You could be taking a whiskey that's not really as good or does not stand out on its own and try to mask it with a finish. That's to me just never really plays out well. I can always, I feel like I can always tell when that's happening and when we are trying to just cover up something out of a bad barrel. If you're going to have a bad barrel, and I know that that happens from a consumer standpoint, I would much prefer a distillery blend that into a product to kind of cover that up rather than finish it and try to hide that. But I digress. <laughs> let's get back to it and let's start with the first one. All right, so number one on my list is Sagamore Double Oaked. This rye whiskey <laughs> is amazing. I love what Sagamore Spirit is doing. Sagamore is based out of Maryland for those that don't know that. And, and they are a craft distiller and all that stuff, but they are just, for a couple of years now, I feel like they have been making waves and just, you know, really impacting the whiskey world. I think plenty of people are starting to get familiar with Sagamore. So if you haven't had a Sagamore product, I would definitely recommend it. And I would recommend that you start here. I think that the Double Oaked is, in my opinion, one of my favorite products that they have. I think that they do a very good job with finishes. They they are very creative, very unique. They have a Manhattan finish. They've done sherry finishes. They've done all these other finishes as well. And, and they just seem to really know what they're doing. <laughs> they finish whiskey, but their whiskey on its own, also very good. Number two, Peerless Double Oak Rye. This bottle, I've heard rumors that this actually is not going to be a thing going forward. I, I don't know. I haven't really seen anything officially on this, but so I kind of don't want to put this on this list because I hate putting things on lists that are impossible for people to find. This one's harder to find, at least for me it was, in general. But because it's that good, <laughs> I had to put it on there. The title of this video, or what it is, is the best finishes in my collection, and this is in my collection. This was actually picked from a grocery store, Market District in Indianapolis. Does an amazing job. Joe and Lori and everybody else on, that's part of that team out there that picks these barrels do a fantastic job at picking. They know what they're doing, they know what they're looking for, and they pick fantastic whiskeys. I can't say it enough. I didn't get a chance to try this one before I bought it, but I trust them, and I know that they know how to pick whiskey. So I went ahead and bought it, went home, tried it, immediately went back the next day and bought more of them. And just, I don't know, <laughs> it is a one of the best whiskeys I think I've had in general. So, you know, shout out to them for picking it. I haven't had like the regular double oak ride to compare it to see is their pick that much better. I don't know. I haven't tried any of that stuff, but I just know that what's in this bottle is fantastic. Again, you find a place that knows how to pick whiskey. You can trust them a lot of the times. I trusted them here and they did a fantastic job with this particular bottle. All right. If we're going to talk about brands that know how to 
finished whiskey, we have to talk about Bardstown Bourbon Company. Now, whether or not you agree with this particular one, chances are there is some type of finish that you enjoy from Bardstown and there they do so many of them <laughs> there is a ton of them a lot of collaborations they do so many different things they did this founders collaboration where they did like KBS founders founders KBS barrels and then finished it in there and and it's kind of funny because KBS is a beer finished in bourbon barrels so you're it's a cycle <laughs> it's like a circle <laughs> but it's something that I thought would be good I like stouts for the same reasons that I like bourbon, most of the time you get coffee, tobacco, chocolate, some of those notes. And I enjoy those notes in whiskey. I enjoy those notes in beer. So to, to finish a bourbon or finish a whiskey in general in any type of stout barrel, I'm probably going to be a fan of it. Got a chance to try this one. And again, same type of deal where the minute I had it, I just knew that, man, this is fantastic. Now, I will say that I've let people try this and some people have disliked it a lot and the next question i ask is do you like stouts and a lot of times the answer is no i don't know that there's been somebody that liked stout beer that didn't like this that i've come in contact with but plenty of people that didn't like stout beer didn't like this bottle but i loved this bottle i thought that this was one of the better ones they've done i know they've partnered with goose island and kind of did the same thing good sure still would prefer this bottle over that. And I still see this bottle actually sitting around in stores now. So if you are into stout beer and you haven't had this, I would recommend you try to hunt this one down because I still think it's findable. All right, number four, Penelope Four Grain Toasted. <laughs> this is their barrel strength version. I don't, I've seen this hit or miss. Like, I, I don't know. I, I've kind of like, I thought this was a one-time deal because I saw it released and then I never saw it again. And then I saw them come out with a version that's not barrel strength. And then I thought, okay, maybe that's like the normal one. And then I actually posted this bottle and Penelope actually commented on it saying something about like, you got one of the originals, something like that. So then I thought, okay, maybe they just don't do it <laughs> anymore. And then lately I've seen a barrel strength version of a toasted bourbon again. So I don't really know <laughs> if it's available or not available, or I don't know. I don't really know anything about the status of this whiskey. All I know is that it's a bottle in my collection that I've tried and I almost couldn't stop drinking it. I mean, it was like we had a family event, you know, the holidays, all that stuff going on, had some family over and we, we popped this bottle and tried it and just amazing. It was one of the, the best finishes that I've had. And again, that's why it's on this list, duh. But I mean, it was just so good that I was like, man, you know, normally what I do is like when people come over, we start with something and we just kind of go through the collection and try different things and if there's something somebody really wants to try or if i want somebody to try something different we go down those paths but for this we just stuck right here <laughs> we hung out with this bottle and it was great and i love the fact that we got chances to sit there and just enjoy each other's company and all that stuff even though part of me was like uh don't drink it all <laughs> but that's what it's here for it's meant to be enjoyed so i got no problem with it but I will be sad when it's gone. All right, number five. This is Hard Truth's Sweet Mash Rye finished in PX Brandy casks. <laughs> I think I got it all. I'm a fan of Hard Truth anyway. Their rye, their sweet mash process is definitely contributing to something down there. They're, <laughs> they are doing an amazing job. If you haven't had any products from Hard Truth, I would recommend maybe starting with their regular sweet mash rye. But I mean, everything they've done down there has been very, very good. They don't seem like a typical craft distillery in my opinion. This is one of those scenarios where I enjoy your whiskey on its own. I don't know that you really need to make a finished product, but I also understand, like I said earlier, opening that door to introduce more people to your product. I understand that as well. So I kind of get it, kind of thought, well, I'll see how it is. And this is actually a bottle that was sent to me from them. And they just, all they ever ask, anytime they ever send anything is, to just try it and let them know what I think. And I tried it and I let them know what I think. I thought that this was one of the best whiskeys that I've had this year, so far. Still kind of early in the year, but still, either way, <laughs> this is one that I thought, and I've mentioned this before, but food pairing with whiskey to me is difficult. If you're dealing with straight bourbon, you have the ability to kind of maneuver between I would say bourbon or rye, like scotch even, certain types of whiskey. I think it's a little bit easier to cut because the taste profiles are so different between those. If I stick with just bourbon, I think it's a lot harder because there can be bourbons that taste different, but, and they definitely do. <laughs> but when it comes to pairing with food, there's reasons why. So with wine, for example, I can kind of change that to where 
I'm pairing something, you know, a steak with red wine because of that combination. If there's something that's maybe a little greasy, like a burger, if I want to go something that's a little bit more bubbly, I can pair a rosé, I can do champagne, I can use different textures of different wines to kind of do pairings. But with whiskey, I can't do that. Finishing opens up that door for me. So when I do pairings and things like that, the first place I look is finished whiskeys. This bottle is one that the minute that I had it, <laughs> the first thought I had was, what could I pair this with? And I thought this would do well, I think, with something that's a little bit more bland, something like a chicken dish or sushi even, something like that, because the flavors this brings, you wouldn't want something that's gonna wash it out, but you want something that it's going to complement, and it's only gonna complement it if the dish doesn't have too much going on. So that was my thought. That's what I sent back to them and told them as feedback. But really at the end of the day, all you need to know is that I like this bottle. I think you do have to like brandy. I think you do have to like finished whiskey, obviously. But all those things considered, if you see any of these from Hard Truth, just try them. I think they're great bottles. All right, number six is from Chattanooga Whiskey. This is their straight bourbon finished and white port cask. Here's another one that was sent to me as well. Same type of deal. Send it to me, just try it. This is new. We just want to hear what you think, all that stuff. Well, what I think is this is also one of the best whiskeys I've had all year. There's been a lot of good whiskey that's come out, but I think a lot come from craft distillers that I've had this year that are fantastic. There's been a lot of finished whiskeys that I've had this year that are fantastic, and this is no different. I've mentioned this before, but when whiskey companies send you bottles and they say to try something, whatever, there's so many people I see, and I'm not bashing anybody for this, but I see so many people on social media, YouTube, whatever, that could on here and talk about how good this bottle is, but never go find it for themselves, never go spend their own money on this. This bottle and that Hard Truth bottle, well, Hard Truth, I already did spend my own money on it. <laughs> this bottle, if I ever find another one, I'm buying it, probably every one they got in the store because I thought it was that good. So yes, I could say that it's good, but put your money where your mouth is. And I would absolutely do that with this bottle. It is worth me finding backups, especially because it's a limited availability or a limited release type of deal. But if I find this, I'm definitely buying another bottle. All right, number seven, this is the Nulu Toasted Rye. This is barrel strength as well. So it, it's a pick, but also from Market District, <laughs> the, the grocery store here locally that knows how to pick whiskey, shocker. This one is one, the first time I ever had it, I instantly thought of Michter's Barrel Proof Toasted Rye. The difference between the two is this was cheaper <laughs> and I could find this one a lot easier than I can the Michter's Toasted Barrel Strength Rye. So I love that Michter's product, but again, with how hard that is to find, and sometimes even when I do find it, I don't wanna pay that price. Here's a great alternative that I think is well worth it. I don't know if as many people pay attention to this bottle, maybe because it's Nulu or something, I don't know. I really don't know why people don't give this bottle the time of day, but I do think it is a great alternative if you enjoy that Michter's product. I actually posted this on social media and mentioned that this reminds me of Michter's and got a separate reply from Nulu explaining to me how they kind of modeled their process after what Michter's does and they kind of use that blueprint in order to come up with this product. I think they not only did that, but they knocked it out of the park. So great job, Nulu, and that's why this is on this list. Last but not least, this is the Maker's Mark Private Select Derby Pie. This is one that I actually was involved in, and the barrel that this is sitting on is that actual whiskey. That's what it was in. So for those maybe not as familiar, Maker's Mark has this process where they have different staves, five different types of staves, and you can make a combination as that whatever combination you want using a total of 10 staves. So if you want to do two, 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 whatever it is, you know, like however, whatever combination you want, <laughs> you, you just let them know and they, they finish it that way and then they bottle it for you. Now that I've done that process, I have so much respect <laughs> for people that are able to do this and make it a fantastic product. When you are blending there, one of the things I've mentioned before is it is like, I would say blending whiskey in general is probably like this, where you know what it needs if you're aiming for a certain taste profile. It's like cooking in a sense that you understand that it needs more salt, let's say. But imagine looking at your pantry or your cupboard or whatever, your cabinets, and you see all these seasonings, but nothing's labeled. So now you have to taste each one to figure out which one is a saltier seasoning and, and then apply that to your cooking. But just because you apply that doesn't mean it's gonna really turn out the way you want. You might have to go back and try it all over again. So the, the amount of experimenting and time it takes to get something like this done to where it's a great product 
it's a, it's an art. It is definitely an art. And I had so much more respect for whiskey blending after I did this process. Great whiskey, obviously. <laughs> but the second part of this is just the experience. Getting a chance to partner with a liquor store here and go out there and give my opinion, give my feedback, understand the process, learn more about it. Fantastic experience. And, and this bottle itself is special to me for that reason. So that's why it's number one on this list. So in case you can't tell, I am a fan of finished whiskey. I, I hope that they keep going. I think some of the finishes can kind of be ridiculous. I think I saw it finished with, what is it? George Dickel and hot sauce or something like that. Like that, yeah, I don't know. Some of the times it can get kind of crazy. But in general, I think that finishing whiskey is great because of all those reasons I listed before, opens up this whiskey world to a brand new audience, hopefully and gets people to maybe learn a little bit more about what's actually being finished. As always, I appreciate all the support. I appreciate you tuning into this video. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.